Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan and I have an endless TBR. We are nearing the end of the month, so I thought I would go through the books that I've acquired over the course of this month. Uh, as you can tell by the title, these are books that are bought and borrowed. Since I don't buy a whole lot of books, but I do check out a lot of books from the library, I thought that I would let you know what I have currently checked out because those are books that I've acquired for a temporary period of time and I hope to get to uh, before I have to bring them back. <laughs> we'll start with the library books. First being a nonfiction title that was recommended by a regular user of the library. This is Books Promiscuously Read, Reading as a Way of Life by Heather Cass White. And it talks about the importance of reading, what uh, reading can do for the reader as far as ideas introduced and how to take more from your reading life, I think. Hoping to get to this soon. It's a really tiny book, but it also has quite small margins and font. So we shall see. The next is Alice Wong's memoir called The Year of the Tiger, An Activist's Life. I first heard of Alice Wong when I read Disability Visibility, which she edited the submissions for. And I was very intrigued to see her memoir is sort of a mixed media journal type format. And I wanted to see um, where she came from and how she has come to the life that she's living as a disability activist and a disabled individual herself. So really looking forward to getting into this. Next is a teen short story collection edited by Dahlia Adler. She's got a couple of collections floating around and this is the newest one, At Midnight. This is 15 Beloved Fairy Tales Reimagined and it features authors such as Tracy Dion, Melinda Lowe, Darcy Little Badger, Rebecca Potus, Rory Power, um, and an all new fairy tale by Melissa Albert. So um, looking forward to getting into this. While it's thick itself, it's a collection of short stories, so each one shouldn't take me too long to get through, which means I should be able to move through the collection fairly quickly. Next is the second book in Chuck Wendig's Miriam Black series. This is Mockingbird. I'm going to put a cover up next to me because I got the library barcode on the front of this book and I don't want to share. Um, this is, like I said, the second book in a series in which Miriam Black is our main character. She's very goth, think, um, Rooney Mara's character in The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Um, and I apologize for referencing the American version of that film, uh, but very dark and gritty type character um, who has gotten this way because when she touches another human being, she can see how and when they die, which seems pretty dark and depressing. The first book really started a journey where she comes in conflict with a drug lord um, and I think that is going to sort of continue. She wants to figure out where this power comes from for herself. And there might be other powers that other people have within this world. And I enjoyed the writing. Um, so I wanted to see what was continuing in this series. I don't read a lot of, I guess, urban fantasy. Um, but this one was intriguing enough that I thought I would give the second one a go. The next two titles are volumes five and six of Naoki Urasawa's Monster. The, uh, this manga has, I think, 18 volumes, and I'm really upset my library system seems to only have up to number 10. So I am running through these fairly quickly, and I'm pretty nervous about what happens when I run out of the volumes I can get my hands on without additional cost. We'll get to that when we get to that. For those of you who don't know, Monster features a Japanese doctor working in Germany in the early 90s, so shortly after the Berlin Wall came down, and there was a lot of political issues going on in Germany between the different political parties. And the story becomes interesting when this up-and-coming doctor makes a decision to save one patient over another because this patient was there first. So he saves the life of a small boy. Um, who, when he grows up, is actually a sociopath. And as with a lot of mystery or suspense manga, um, things go left. <laughs> they go left 
fast. And we are deep in the weeds with a um, like Nazi conspiracy. Um, what happened to this boy? Where is he now? How do we stop him? Um, so very fast paced. I would recommend it if you read volumes one and or two and really like it to go ahead and continue three and four were great. Looking forward to five and six. So the final library book that you're going to see in this video, I have a couple others, but those are for book clubs. So you'll likely see those in a different video is the sixth book in Shannon Messenger's Keeper of the Lost Cities series. This one is entitled Nightfall. Uh, the Keeper of the Lost Cities series features a character named Sophie who is living her normal daily life and is eventually swept away to the elven world where she learns that she is in fact an elf. Um, this is a middle grade series. They are quite thick, but moves pretty quickly through the th series itself. She's made friends. She's also made enemies over the course of the five books I've read so far and looking forward to seeing what sort of shenanigans they get up to in this one. I think this time they actually do have an adult on board with whatever they're working on. So that's a step in the right direction from some of the other installments in this series. Up until yesterday, I did not have any books that I had bought and brought into my home of, uh, of my selection. However, we were at my sister-in-law's house and about 15 minutes away, there's an independent bookstore that I enjoy uh, patronizing. So I went in and picked up a couple of books. Um, as I typically mention, when I go into an indie bookstore, I do like to purchase something and support this independent business. I also like to look for things that I don't have readily accessible at the library. In this instance, I picked up a couple of books from small presses that are typically not likely to be selected for the library collections. Some libraries look for those small presses. Um, but it tends to be less frequently. Um, so it's easier for me to purchase these books if I feel like I would like to read them. The first book I selected is a dark literary fiction title called At the Edge of the Woods by Masatsugu Ono. I apologize for the pronunciation of that. This is a Japanese title translated to English by Juliet Winters Carpenter. Um, this feels like it's gonna deal with themes of family and isolation. We've got creepy woods and there's probably creatures living in the woods. Then there's some old woman that shows up out of the blue. The older son like brings this old woman in and before dad could figure out where she came from, she disappears. So there's sort of spooky stuff in here. And this cover is just absolutely stunning. How could I possibly have left that on the shelf? Next is a book that I have heard quite a bit about, but again, because it's from a small press, I actually don't have it available through my local library system. I picked up Max Booth the Thirds, We Need to Do Something. Uh, this is another like family isolation story where this family that's had a lot of tension building um, is suddenly trapped in their bathroom due to a tornado warning. Um, I know that this gets, this is shelved as horror. Um, so while I can't really fathom what's going to happen in these pages, um, I think it's going to get really dark, really twisted and possibly gory. And I'm not sure, but I think I'm ready for it. <laughs> this bookstore had a couple of books listed, um, whether they were damaged or used at a discount. So I saw All About Love by Bell Hooks and hadn't read anything from this author, have heard nothing but really good things. And thought that the acclaimed first novel in her Love Song to the Nation publications might be a good place to start. Um, so this talks about a society of love and what, what love means to a number of different people, how we feel like we may have lost some of the ability to love our, our neighbors and, you know, be kind to one another. Um, so, you know, it's blurbed on the back by Gloria Steinem, Maya, Maya Angelou. Um, I think I have plenty to learn from this particular volume. So I'll let you know when that comes up. I went back and forth on whether or not I was going to take this book home with me, but I did end up, I did end up purchasing Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. This is a book I can get from the library, but I think there's only one copy in the system. It's something I've really had my eye on and was interested in. Um, 
and have heard people really clamoring for the second book, which is supposed to come out, I think in the spring or maybe summer of this year. Um, so since it's in paperback and it feels really good in my hand, it came home with me as well. This starts off with a, uh, a number of teen characters who pledge themselves to Her Royal Majesty's Coven. And after a civil war, we have flashed forward where only one of our characters remains in this particular coven. Um, the rest of them are trying to live a normal life. And one other person is uh, has defected to create her own inclusive and more intersectional coven. It seems that there's a big bad coming through and we have to get the gang back together. The character remaining within the establishment has to decide whether to do what's right or what it takes to win and what the difference between those things might be. So again, I've heard really good things and looking forward to getting into this. The last book I picked up at Word Bookstore in Jersey City is My Good Man by Eric Gansworth. To be honest, I didn't look very closely at what this book was about. I read Gansworth's memoir, Apple Skin to the Core, um, I think early last year, and it was in a vlog. So I'll put that above in case you want to go check out what I thought of it when I read it. The memoir is, I would highly recommend Eric's memoir. It is written in verse. It references a lot of the Beatles canon, which isn't necessary to understand, but it does add an additional layer. Um, so check out the vlog if you want to hear more. This one is a novel that I had not heard anything about. Um, it's a coming of age novel uh, featuring native perspective. As Gansworth was raised in the T Tuscarora nation himself. Um, so this looks at a uh, Brian, a 20 something reporter, um, being the only indigenous writer in the newsroom. So he's always getting these very specific beats that have to do with what's happening on the reservation. Um, and, and his community generally, when he comes across a tragic story, because a mysterious roadside assault lands Tim the brother of Brian's mother's late boyfriend in the hospital. And Brian wants to pick up the story and find out what has happened to Tim uh, and who, you know, who was the perpetrator of this. So the book is produced beautifully. The pages feel really nice. And I read the first chapter or so. Um, and it looks like we go back in time to see a little bit of what has happened, where we are in the present time. Um, and but it was just something that I felt drawn, felt drawn to in the moment. Make sure to let me know in the comments below if there's anything you picked up this month that you're especially excited to start, whether it be from the library or something permanent to add to your shelves. If you haven't picked up any new books today, try one of these as a recommendation. Let me know how it goes. Leave me a book stack emoji in the comments if you've made it this far. Like this video if you've liked it. Subscribe if you'd like to see more from me, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!